Hey, what's up guys? This is Steel Rain and welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to be looking at the new Runcam Eagle 2 Pro. And a uh, pretty exciting camera we have here. I've actually had this camera for about a month now. Had it on a few rigs and decided to test it out before pushing out a review. You know, that way I have a little bit of experience with it. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started. And what I'm going to say first off is it looks like Runcam has done a good job on this camera. They've taken a lot of the customer's needs and wants and thrown it in this new camera. So we'll go ahead and start off with the specs. So first off, it's not a cheap camera by by any means. It's $49.99. So, you know, kind of on the upper end of FPV cameras, there's a lot cheaper things out there. But I mean, you know, I've, I've seen worse. And for what this thing packs and features, I think it's worth every single cent. So uh, the sensor in it is a one and one eighth inch a uh, 1 and 1.8 inch CMOS sensor. Um, I'm pretty sure that has something to do with the selectable field of view, but we'll get to that. Uh, its resolution is 800 TV lines. And what I could really say about this camera, and I'm sure others that have used it would agree, its resolution is outstanding, especially for a CMOS sen uh, sensor on it. So um, it does have a selectable 16 by 9 aspect ratio to 4 by 3. And under their specifications, it says under the 16 by 9 specs, it is two, it's uh, equivalent to a, a 2.1 millimeter lens at 170 uh, degrees field of view for 16.9, and for 4 by 3, it's at a it says it's closer to a 2.5 millimeter lens at 140 degrees uh, field of view. Uh, like I said, you know, switchable 16 by 9, 4 to 3. It's also uh, PAL and NTSC selectable so what's really good about that is that you know before cameras it was either pick one or the other this one allows you to do it in the uh, the camera's OSD and like I said uh, as well as the camera settings OSD it also has a built-in OSD that you could put on your uh, your fly time your voltage and your pilot's name which is pretty cool um, built-in microphone in the back here as you can see a little hole that says mic there so that's that's a good feature for guys that want to hear their props and you know the motors and everything and flight things like that uh, what it really does well is it's got uh, it takes direct DC input from 5 to 36 volts so I mean that's that's craziness um, pretty much any battery voltage it's gonna handle up to I think that's upwards of like an 8s battery so pretty much from a, a 2S all the way up to an 8S, somewhere around there, you know, that's pretty wide voltage range and should handle pretty good with voltage spikes. Now, what they fixed from this, uh, from the previous Runcam Eagle 2, is that this has a metal case. A lot heavier. I think it came in around like 22, 23 grams. That's pretty heavy for an FBV camera. And it's because of this metal case they went to an ABS case and supposedly it weighs now somewhere around 15 grams. So what I'm going to do here real quick, turn that on, we'll zero it out. And we'll go ahead and plop it on without the camera lens on first of all. And just like they said, 15 grams. Now if we throw on the Eagle 2 with the metal case, it's about 19 grams or so. So it's it's right around 20 grams. So they, they cut off about 5 grams, but you know, in this hobby, every gram counts. Go ahead and toss that to the side. And like I said, you know, the outer uh, casing here is ABS, so it's it's gonna be a lot lighter. And then you can see the uh, the pin out there in the back, you know, five to thirty-six volts ground your video out wire, audio out, and also VBAT for your OSD. And it's also got the uh, the ground and OSD dongle. So we'll go ahead and also look at what this comes with. A little plastic bag of goodies. Everybody knows what that is. The old uh, the, the OSD dongle. It's always good that they still have these, but I've got so many by now, you know, they're kind of worthless to me. And we got a different case here for different mounting. As you can see there, it's got the different mounting type in the back. 
Comes with a bag of screws and looks like spacers and things of that nature. And one of the most important wires here, the OSD wire. So you just plug that into the back. Matter of fact, we'll do it here real quick. Just plug that into the back there and leave that on your rig, you know. And then um, you go ahead and just plug your dongle into there, have it zip tied to a standoff or something like that. And makes it real easy if you want to fly from day or night or different settings to go ahead and change your settings on board. Also comes with a three wire. So basically what the three wire is for is if you just want to run your power, ground, and video out. If you don't want to run audio or VBAT, this is the wire for you. Otherwise, they supply a five pin wire for that. So it'll get, give you actually audio and the full voltage of your battery on screen display for this camera if you're not running a Betaflight OSD through your flight controller. Also comes with that standard black mount. Nobody really uses these so much anymore, but some people still do. So that's pretty much all it comes with, guys. Uh, some instructions as well. You know, nothing really exciting about that. So what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and get this camera up and working and we'll show you some of the settings that I prefer to use and uh, we'll go ahead and show you some footage outside. Okay guys, I've got the camera all hooked up and everything here so I'm going to go ahead and show you some of the menus here. I've got everything turned off and the camera's on screen display right now and anything you see on screen right now, uh, the little SD card and the camera up in the upper left hand corner, that's all DVR that won't show up on the screen. So first of all, we're going to go ahead and deal with the camera's uh, OSD that's built in. So what you do is you plug in your dongle and just hold the up button. And there you go. We've got the pilot. I've got everything turned off, so I'll go ahead and turn on everything. Turn the timer on and turn the voltage on. Don't worry about baseline there. Go ahead and exit. And as you can see, it all popped on the screen there. Now if you hold the left button, It'll go ahead and select the voltage. You can move it around the screen. And what's cool about this camera is if you push and hold the middle button enter, it'll start blinking and you could adjust your voltage up or down if it's off. Pretty cool feature there. So we'll go ahead and leave that there. If you hold the down button, you can go ahead and move your pilot name around. It's just set the run cam right now because I use Betaflight OSD. Hit the middle button again to, to enter. And then your timer on the right hand side, just hold right. And it should start moving here for me. Not sure exactly why that one's not moving. Might be something wrong with my dongle there. But usually you just hold the right button and it will move your timer around. For some odd reason, it isn't doing it for me. So we'll go ahead and what we're going to go ahead and do is enter the main OSD menu. And as you can see right now, this is camera defaults. If you look at uh, the edges of my vehicle and some of the houses out there in the distance, you could tell the, the sharpness is just set way, way too high. Like I said, camera defaults. So I'll go ahead and show you guys. Go ahead and enter the menu there. And I'll just show you guys for video brevity exactly what each setting does. So if you go into image, hit the middle button. Now the max gain, that's something you're going to want to turn down because I'll show you guys here real quick. If you do a flip or something, see how long it takes to actually change in the background? So you could have a video whiteout. So what you want to go ahead and do is turn that down. Maybe to like, you know, some people turn it all the way down to zero. I personally keep it somewhere around two or three, you know, so it doesn't soften the image too much. So we'll go ahead and return. Save and exit. And I'll show you exactly what that does. Now it's a little bit quicker. You know, some people, I, I think personally that's livable for me. It's a lot faster than what it was. So... Next we'll go into, you always want to keep the wide dynamic range on too. Image enhance, so sharpness. 
So you could change the value there, manual. So the more sharp it is, the more, I guess, fragmenting it's going to look in the picture. So most people usually end up turning that down to like one, two, or three. Edge value as well will also get rid of some of the jagged edges. So the higher you turn it up, the worse it gets. We'll go ahead and turn that down to two. Return. Return again. If you save and exit, you can see it kind of cleaned up some of the jagged edges, you know, and, and some of the, the artifacting inside. Um, the edge cleaned up the edges a little bit. You could turn it all the way down, but uh, like other guys have found out, the picture just looks too soft. And um, so you go back to image here. Go back to image enhance. And this value here, the more you turn it up, the more shimmery. I'm not sure if you guys could see it too much in the um, the uh, monitor I have here. But the higher it goes up, the more the picture starts getting that shimmery effect to it. So usually I just keep it down around two or three. Edge value usually down around two. Saturation, you know, just keep it on auto. No big deal there. And always make sure, guys, that um, you go ahead and save and exit every time. Otherwise, it'll just default back to uh, what it what it was at. Now, here's some of the uh, screen formats. Right now, it's set to four by three. It's cut off a little bit on the edges of my sixteen by nine screen. So you change it to sixteen by nine. It'll just flop right over and save that. Or you could go back to 4x3. Really depends on your goggle settings or your preferences. Um, I have both 16x9 and 4x3 goggles, so I like the fact this camera gives you the options. And also NTSC and PAL, which is pretty good because, you know, before you had to either buy one or the other. Uh, day, night, you know, you got black and white, you know, auto, external, and color. You know, usually I just leave it to auto, and uh, if you don't if you don't want it to switch at all, just leave it to color. It's normal setting, and of course, you know English and a lot of these other features in here, including a lot of the ones in here. You know, you're not really going to use like mirror uh, brightness. You might change. Really depends on on your liking. I just kind of left it default. Really depends on if it's cloudy outside or bright. You know, but. You know, you have the OSD dongle to change that anytime you want. Don't mess with zoom in. And, uh, you know, for the sake of brevity, guys, that's that's pretty much it. My preferred settings um, on this personal camera, you know, so that's pretty much going to be it. Um, there's one thing I would like to mention if Runcam is listening. If you could, this camera would be perfect in this form factor. I know I've seen you guys do it with the Sparrow. If you guys could make it somehow go down to that size, the size of a Micro Swift or a Micro Sparrow, it'd be the perfect all-around camera because it'd be real light, compact, and you know perfect for almost every build. So with that, guys, that's going to be the, the end of this video. Uh, if you enjoyed the video and learned anything, uh, please like, subscribe, and share, and leave any questions, comments, or suggestions down in the normal place. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. All right, guys. Here's some of my settings in the golden hour. The sun just went down, and this will also lets you hear the mic, which usually is not very good on these cameras. But right now, they're, the sun just set. I have my gain set to approximately around three. If it gets darker, you could always up your gain to, uh, to make it a little bit more manageable at night. Both my edge and uh, detail and sharpness are set to two. That way is where the sun just set. This is all in 16 by 9.
got pretty good image quality if you uh, ask me.